Welcome back. We've been talking about India's domestic policies and economy under Narendra Modi government, but how will India's foreign policy change under the new leadership? To discuss this, I'm joined by the U.S. correspondent for the Indian newspaper, The Times of India, Chedanand Rajgata. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good to be with you. Are we going to see radical changes in foreign policy, or are we going to see continuity more of the same? I think uh, within the Indian system, there's a broad uh, consensus uh, where, with regards to foreign policy. I don't see any dramatic changes. Uh, there may be some subtle shifts. Uh, but by and large, uh, I think there'll be a sense of uh, continuity. The foreign policy is also largely driven by uh, you know, the Indian uh, bureaucracy and the Indian uh, foreign policy establishment. Uh, and over the years, both the Congress and uh, BJP, uh, which is going to replace uh, the Congress-led government, have broadly agreed on a number of uh, uh, foreign policy initiatives. I don't see any dramatic shifts in foreign policy. Let's look at uh, regional foreign mm -hmm. policy, especially with relations uh, with uh, Pakistan. Uh, I mean, Modi is a Hindu nationalist. I mean, how is this victory going to be seen in Pakistan? Uh, I think the Pakistanis have been very circumspect. They have not been overtly hostile. They've actually, uh, I think, uh, made some welcoming uh, noises. Uh, they are, uh, I think, holding their breath and uh, seeing how it goes. Uh, within the BJP itself, uh, you have to understand that uh, during the previous BJP government, uh, relations with Pakistan were fairly good, surprisingly good. Uh, but then that was a very uh, matured relationship that the uh, uh, leadership that the BJP had uh, back uh, between 98 and uh, 2004. Uh, the current P uh, uh, BJP uh, dispensation may be slightly uh, more hardline. Uh, they might take uh, a firmer stand uh, uh, on, when it comes to Pakistan on issues like uh, terrorism. Uh, on the other hand, there's also a tremendous, uh, you know, business-oriented uh, uh, leadership. Uh, Narendra Modi, in many ways, is uh, like Nawaz Sharif, who wants to promote business, wants to promote uh, commerce. So if the Pakistanis step forward and want to, you know, build uh, bridges on the commercial and trade uh, front, uh, I don't think they'll find the BJP wanting. Uh, the one catch, of course, will be this whole terrorism thing. And uh, God forbid, you know, there's another attack in India. I think. Uh, they, the Pakistanis might find a more muscular Indian response right. uh, than they did uh, during the Congress regime. So is it likely then that he will put aside religious and uh, ideological differences when he deals with Pakistan, be more pragmatic? Uh, some people have been calling this commercial diplomacy. Is that where the emphasis is going Absolutely. to be? Absolutely. I think, I think uh, his religiosity is vastly overstated. His whole uh, Hindu uh, nationalist right-wing stuff is vastly overstated, I think. Uh, Narendra Modi primarily, uh, you know, has the Gujarati ethos of doing business with, uh, um, you know, anybody who wants to do business. Uh, I think uh, throughout the campaign we saw that uh, a lot of his speeches dealt with uh, development uh, and issues like, uh, you know, business, trade, jobs, commerce, uh, and very little to do with uh, religion or building temples or, uh, I mean, there's always a small segment of the BJP and the Sangh Parivar, you know, which is, uh, which has, uh, too much religion on the, on its mind, like they say. Uh, but Modi himself and the leadership, by and large, is driven by a, uh, an economic agenda and not a religious agenda. Right. What about the relationship with China? He, he already has good relations with China because they are very big investors in the state that he governed, the state of Gujarat. Uh, is he going to build on that? Then? Absolutely. I, uh, traditionally, the Hindu nationalists have had a look east policy. Uh, and uh, the, both China and Japan are countries that they look up to and uh, engage with a lot. Um, I'm told uh, that, uh, yes, he's visited uh, China more than once, I think. Uh, he's also engaged very heavily in Japan. Japan the, both the Japanese and Chinese are big investors in Gujarat. Uh, and many people expect uh, that to multiply. Uh, and also, uh, c considering that he's had some difficulties with the United States, uh, I think China and Japan uh, stand to gain. Uh, a former U.S. official I spoke to actually told me that if he was to bet on the first country he'd visit, it would probably be Japan. Um, so both uh, China and Japan uh, probably have a good thing going uh, with, the, with the Modi government. And we'll see a similar pattern in Japan, as you said. Absolutely, in Japan too. And uh, the Japanese, like I said, are also big investors in, uh, in, in Gujarat. Uh, so uh, I think there'll be a lot of engagement with uh, China, Japan, even Korea, uh, for that matter. Right. Then there is the relationship with the United States. Now, there, there's a lot of confusion about what has happened in the past. I mean, mm -hmm. we hear that the United States had denied him a visa at one mm -hmm. point when he wanted to visit the United States. Others say he never even applied for a visa, so that's a moot point. Uh, but where, how do you see the relationship evolve now? Well, the fact is uh, he, he did have a visa. He had a business visa which was revoked. 
Uh, so it's not even the question of applying. And later on, of course, he never applied. Uh, and o over the years, he has not even addressed this issue, he's not spoken about it. And uh, very sadly, and I, I think uh, very gratuitously, there have been several statements from Washington about if he applies. So uh, it's a very awkward situation. Um, uh, I, I think the onus is on Washington to reach out to him. And they've tried. They, they started to do it, but it's been very sp uh, spotty. Uh, I noticed that uh, while many other countries have welcomed uh, his victory so far, I have not heard anything from the White House or State, State Department. Probably in course of the day it'll come, but they've been very slow off the blocks. Uh, so, uh, but then on the other hand, uh, you you have to understand that the Indian diaspora and the Gujarati diaspora, particularly, which is enormously in favor of uh, Modi, and he had a sort of a groundswell of support uh, from the diaspora all over the world, including in the United States, wants good relations with the United States. So he has a constituency which, which wants to engage with the United States, which wants a good relationship. Uh, he himself wants to. And he's actually, I discovered last week that he's actually visited the United States as a State Department guest going back to the early 90s. Um, so it's not that he's hostile uh, to the United States, uh, but there are some elements, the, uh, the so-called Human Rights Brigade in Washington, uh, which has you know, put a spanner in the works. And it's up to the administration to address that issue. It's up to um, Secretary of State John Kerry and uh, President Obama to address the issue. And if there is an outreach, I don't think he'll be uh, found wanting in responding. Right, but so far has the track record of the United States been good? Because uh, there's some analysts who say that the United States has tried to isolate Modi. Uh, I would say there are elements within the administration which did that. Uh, there's been, uh, I have reason to believe there's been some rethink. But like I said, it's been very spotty. It's not been consistent. It's not been quick enough. If you notice, uh, all the other countries, the European Union countries particularly, you know, their outreach, the moment they recognize that Modi is going to be, uh, you know, the potential prime minister, more than a year ago, they started reaching out, making trips to Gujarat and engaging with him, the United States was very slow off the block. Uh, there were human rights elements and you know, the left liberal elements in Washington who consistently campaigned against him uh, and um, you know, put a spanner in the works. And they, I don't think the administration moved swiftly enough. Right. And to be honest, I think the Obama administration simply has taken its eyes off uh, India. Uh, and hopefully this uh, incredible victory um, whether you know people like it or not, it was a, a spontaneous expression of Right, uh, so democracy. are you saying that the onus is now on the United States to reach out to him? Absolutely, the onus is on the United States uh, to reach out to the State Department. Um, over time, they have uh, suggested more than once that it should not, the visa sh issue should not be a major uh, you know, wrinkle, uh, and hopefully you know, uh, we'll get to hear from them over the next day or two. Uh, looking more uh, broadly, uh, looking at the international uh, picture right now, um, especially at the United Nations, will India continue to push under Modi for permanent, uh, a permanent seat at the United Nations Security Council? I think so, and they'll probably push much harder. Uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, it's, it's a very assertive moment in India's life, and it's a very assertive political party. This is a political party which is not shy of uh, stating its uh, positions uh, on various world forums. Uh, the BJP had a fairly, uh, you know, muscular foreign policy during the previous uh, uh, BJP-led NDA government between 98 and uh, 2004. Uh, many of the veterans of, uh, the, of the foreign policy during that era have either been sidelined or they have faded into the twilight. But you can expect a lot of young uh, elements uh, to surface. Uh, we hear of uh, Shushma Swaraj, a very articulate, um, you know, uh, senior BJP leader as a potential foreign minister. Uh, and she is a very articulate and very assertive person. Mm. Uh, Are we going to see more of a non-aligned policy from India? Um, I don't think, like I said, there is broadly a consensus within the Indian establishment about where they want to stand. It, it, it won't be a, a, a government which will be totally uh, pro-East uh, or pro-West. I think the, the balancing act, uh, which, is, which has pretty much been practiced by successive governments over the last couple of decades, will continue. Okay, sir. We're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Anna. And that is it for this edition of The Heat. We would love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and story ideas to theheat at cctv-america.com. Once again, that's theheat at cctv-america.com. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.